Hey guys, how's it going? Otaku Mike here, back again with another manga first impressions for you guys today. But first, before we get into our video, if you're new to the channel and you like the content that I create, please consider subscribing, like, comment down below. Without further ado, let's get into our manga first impressions video. So, today we're looking at a side story to a manga called Goblin Slayer. This is specifically volume one of Goblin Slayer. Side story number two, Daikatana, The Singing Death. Can we have shorter titles for our manga? Just saying, there's a long fucking ass title for a manga. So if you don't know what Goblin Slayer is, it is a fantasy manga about a guy in a suit of armor who kills goblins. Simple enough. This particular story of Daikatana is about the sword maiden when she's younger. Simple as that. If you don't know who the sword maiden is, the sword maiden is um, a really high cleric. She is a big, prolific character in the Goblin Slayer universe uh, when Goblin Slayer meets her. She does have a backstory that they touch on in the main series, but they were like, no, we need a manga all to itself, uh, on it, obviously, and that's why we get a uh, Daikatana. So what is Daikatana about? Well, Daikatana is a prequel series to Goblin Slayer. As I said, it is about a young man named Cap, or Captain as they call him. He is new to adventuring, and he wants to take on this dungeon called the Dungeon of Death, which is this dungeon that um death come from death comes from basically and the king of time or whatever says hey we need to stop this because it's starting to ravage our world and we need to nip it in the bud and be like i got you death we're gonna kill you and just kill all the baddies and whatnot in the goblin slayer universe i guess um so our young adventurer has sort of a team put together. He's at a bar, and he, or a tavern, whatever you want to call it, and he sees this woman, i.e. the sword maiden, um, who, but they call her um, the identifier in this. She is just a woman who, she's a cleric. She uh, identifies items that people get in dungeons. And these two guys are hassling her, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm so sorry I, I didn't give you, like, the proper um, identification value for your stuff that you got in the dungeon. And uh, Captain here is kind of like, hey, you know, let, lay off a little bit, you know, she's doing the best she can, basically. And uh, through a weird rigmarole, she, Captain decides to or get her to be a part of their uh, group or fellowship, whatever you want to call it. And she's like, okay, yeah, you know, I'll do it. She's kind of reluctant about it because her first party basically left her in the town and they were like, look, this isn't a job for you because obviously you're a woman and you can't kill shit, apparently. Um, so that's kind of... The whole nutshell of this story is they're putting a team together. They're going after the into this dungeon, the dungeon of death, or whatever you want to call it. And they are trying to get to the bottom of the dungeon in order to uh, basically save the world. Um, oh boy, that is the best I can give you synopsis-wise in a nutshell without totally um spoiling everything within this manga so i am a fan of goblin slayer i'll state that i am a fan of goblin slayer i was very interested in picking this up i also have the side story where is it here is this it yeah this is i got side story year one and then I have where can't get it. I also have the anthology series right here for you. So I am a fan of the Goblin Slayer universe. 
Uh, I was a big fan of the original series. I still am a big fan of the original series. But where I feel that Goblin Slayer short fallings come in are with the side stories. Um, the, the, the original series is really good. Uh, year one is okay. This series, as much as I was interested in it, and I still am interested in it, so I might be a little hypocritical or whatever, I don't know. This first volume is all set up. It is all exposition dumps. It's just really, really crazy. Now, don't get me wrong. The artwork is not bad. Like, I think whenever they have, like, the fight scenes and stuff, fight scenes are really well done. Well, in this manga, they're kind of... kind of few and far between. A lot of this first volume... Now, let me preface this. The first volume is all set up. It's all of them setting up the team. Getting the team together, setting it up, telling you what this world is about, even though you kind of already know what the world is about, because if you're reading Goblin Slayer, you kind of know what the world is about. But, I mean, hey, every manga out there is somebody's first manga. Um, I struggled with this manga. I struggled with this manga really hard. So, as much as I do like Goblin Slayer, and I was interested in reading the series, or the short series, whatever you want to call it, um, mini series, I don't know, I think it's like five volumes, or a little bit more, five volumes, uh, about the Sword Maiden, because she's an interesting character, uh, she's very mysterious in the main Goblin Slayer series, she is different in this, she is not, um, as well put together and is not very confident in this series. So we'll probably see her grow over time in this series. Um, the series doesn't really pull any punches when it comes to getting you into this world. Uh, it tells you everything. Uh, this world is not meant for everybody. They do say that, you know, um, at the beginning, or not the end actually, when they finally get to the dungeon, because it takes them all five chapters, to get to the fucking dungeon. This is only five chapters in this book. They give him body bags, which I thought was really funny. They gave him five body bags because the sixth one, sixth person doesn't need body bag because they're trying to bring the bodies back, which is really funny. Um, the characters aren't well defined in this, but I mean, they're they were like that kind of in the first series, Goblin Slayer series as well. Um, Captain is kind of just a stand-in for Goblin Slayer. He wants to basically kill every evil thing in the world, and he feels like every evil thing is coming from said dungeon, which is this big dungeon of doom, which is, you know, trying to uh, kill everything. You know, you know how it is. Uh, boy, I struggled with this. I am not a person that does well with exposition dumps, so that's why this doesn't click well with me. I mean, there, there's, there are good ways to give an exposition in manga, but I feel like some light novels do fall into the trap of too much explaining, and that's where I kind of feel like uh, Daikatana uh, went with this manga to say the least. Now for the artwork. The artwork is not bad. The artwork does not compare to the original series. The original series has amazing artwork. This is done by a different team, so the artwork is a little different than the original series. You get all your staples, you get your um, guys, and you get your cute, attractive women, which Goblin Slayer is known for. Uh, the 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 guy who usually is a stand-in for yourself, usually, and uh, he likes to protect cute, defenseless women. I don't know. It's weird, <sighs> but yeah, the artwork's not bad. It's not. It's not. It's not, not nothing to write home about, but it's not. It's not bad. It's it's passable. It's it's above average artwork for I would say you know for a Goblin Slayer book. But I mean, God, come on, come on. like look at this one. 
Like, the artwork looks totally better in this book than, you know, in this book, you know. But, you know, hey, beggars can't be cheated. I was on the middle of the road with this manga Daikatana. It's not terrible. It's something you don't need to... to you don't need it to read Goblin Slayer, obviously. This is for... Hardcore Goblin Slayer fans only, really. I I don't know if I could recommend this to people who are just getting into Goblin Slayer. Maybe if you're like farther into Goblin Slayer, check this book out. I don't even really know if this is really a standalone book. Within like, I feel like you need to read Goblin Slayer to read Dai Katana. Even though these are completely different characters other than the Sword Maiden. Um, it just... <clears throat> I don't know. This volume just dragged and dragged on. There were some funny moments that I did enjoy, like, interactions with the characters. But it just drew me back out of it when they started exposition dumping. And, you know, giving me all this information that I kind of already knew. And I really didn't feel like I needed to know. I just wanted them... To get to the dungeon and start killing shit. That's all I really wanted. And it did not deliver in that aspect. I really hope Volume 2 gets better. I really do. I really do. Uh, please let me know if you're going to check this out. If you're a huge Goblin Slayer fan or not. I don't know. You know. Uh, yeah, comment down below. Like, subscribe. Let me know how I did in the video. I think this is probably like uh, the harshest I've ever been on a book. Uh, usually I'm not that harsh on a book. But this, I paid full price for this. I went to the store and bought this. And I expected so much more. That's probably why I didn't like this book as much as I thought I was going to. Because I had really high expectations. Because it was Goblin Slayer. And Goblin Slayer is usually fucking awesome. This was just an average book. An average Goblin Slayer book. Yeah. See you guys later. Thanks. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.